So last time I left you with a cliffhanger. I just set up my first ever brackish aquarium, got a school of super rare ocelot bumblebee gobies, as well as a cleanup crew of thriving nary snails and an amata shrimp. But I wasn't sure what centerpiece fish I should get. So option A was a figure eight puffer. They get about three inches. They could fit in a 20 gallon long, but I'd have to remove all the algae eaters. Option B is a small group of Indian dwarf mud skippers. They stay around 2.5 inches, but they do need landing spots that are out of the water, which means I'd have to completely redo the scape. So after much consideration and polling of my audience, Mudskippers won by a narrow margin. And I decided to go with them because I have kept pufferfish before versus I've never kept any kind of amphibious species before. And then because this particular aquarium has a super low plant load, because not a lot of plants can live in a salt kind of mix, brackish aquarium. So I felt like, yeah, I definitely need the help of the nary snails and the monoshrimp. Plus mudskippers are super cool and weird looking, which I love oddball fish. Now, one of my local fish stores, Aqua Imports, gets in a lot of really cool and rare species. And they had Indian dwarf mudskippers a while ago, which I posted on my Instagram, but they were currently out of stock. So I got on their email waiting list. And then I happened to get the notification they were in while I was on vacation. And so I was kind of like leery about getting on the public Wi-Fi with my credit card information to order them. But finally was able to find a spot where I could safely order them. And it turns out you need to select a pickup day. Well, the problem is, yes, I have a brackish aquarium, but there were no landing spots in there. So I got back on a Friday. The latest pickup date I could pick was the following Thursday. So let's go. Now I thought they would need a ramp kind of to get out of the water. So I ended up taking out all the pieces of petrified wood and then I placed some big chunks in the back of the tank so that it sloped upwards and toward the right back corner. And then of course I dropped the water line down so that the top of the rock would be out of the water. And then a few days later, me and the kids went and picked up my three mud skippers that I had ordered. And the first thing I found out is they are very, very jumpy. The fish store employee was like, definitely make sure you keep that lid shut all the time, cover any cracks and corners you need to. And then another interesting thing was they, when they gave us the fish bag, they put little pieces of styrofoam in there so that the mud skippers could rest on top of them. However, in reality, I found that because you know, you're in a car and the water's slushing around most of the time, usually they just kind of clung to the walls of the fish bag slightly out of the water. Another problem, because they stay kind of half or mostly out of the water a lot of the times, there was no good way to administer the quarantine medication trio that I normally prophylactically treat all my fish with. And also I did not have a brackish quarantine tank available. <gasps> so I definitely did a big no-no, which is, you know, this is one of those do as I say, not what I do, but this is like the, probably the first time in six or seven years I've ever directly put fish into an existing aquarium that already had fish in it. And I was just praying that it would go well. And uh, thankfully it looks like I dodged a bullet. Now, if you know me, we are a geeky family. So of course had to choose an appropriate name. My kids are really into Minecraft right now. So I chose the names Notch, Steve, and Alex. And right off the bat, Notch was the alpha. He completely took over the main rock, the landing ramp that I had made, and then would not let the other mudskippers get on it, especially during feeding time. And so I quickly find out, found out because of their great jumping and skipping skills, they do not need a ramp at all. So I ended up getting a kind of small turtle basking platform with large suction cups. And then I put it in the back left corner. And then promptly that was claimed by the second strongest mud skipper. Unfortunately, the third, the weakest mud skipper, basically, he was not doing well, like was constantly hiding. I would find him sandwiched in between the Java fern leaves. And even though I would try to put food right in front of him where the other mud skippers couldn't get to it. He just refused to eat. And I tried like a ton of foods, like variety in terms of frozen, freeze dried, uh, live foods. 
And so after a few days of never seeing him eating and him getting skinnier and skinnier, I got really worried. I ended up returning him to the fish store. Maybe they can figure out something. And then I didn't get a replacement for him because I figured, you know what? I already have two landing platforms. I don't really want a third one. So we're just gonna leave it at that. So now we have Notch the alpha and then Alex is the, uh, the beta mudskipper. So it looked like everything was gonna be fine. My two remaining mudskippers were super healthy, really great appetites. They were eating a lot, gaining weight. Like I love to see that. And so I was taking some footage of Alex one day and she was just kind of soaking on her platform half in and half out of the water. And then I noticed the bubbles from the sponge filter right next to her. There were some big ones. And if you know anything about bubbles, they should be small and pop right away. And so if you see big bubbles, sometimes that means there's something weird in the water. So I immediately measured the water with some test strips and boom, there was absolutely evidence of nitrite in the water. So I freaked out, did a huge water change. Maybe the tank became uncycled again after I had to renovate everything and then move all the rocks and dis disturb the substrate. I actually had to take out one of the two sponge filters. And so I added a bunch of Fritz Zine 7, which is a nitrifying bacteria uh, product. And then I was really carefully, like basically monitoring the nitrite constantly. And it would not disappear completely. Like I was like fasting them, not feeding them. And every time I would measure the nitrite, it was always like not perfectly white. It was like off white. And I would measure my freshwater tanks and they would be perfectly snow white. So I was like, what is going on? I even got some Fritz Zyme Turbostart 700, which is like the expensive nitrifying bacteria that has to be refrigerated. Dumped a whole bottle of that in there. Still was having slight nitrite well, it turns out, I had no idea, but did you know in salt water aquariums, they don't even measure for nitrite? So the reason why is in freshwater tanks, freshwater fish, their gills, the reason why they have problems with absorbing nitrite is it outcompetes the chlorides they need to have uh, basically issues. They end up having brown blood disease or kind of issues with their blood versus in saltwater tanks, the saltwater fish, there's plenty of chlorides in the water, right? Sodium chloride is salt. And so the high concentration of chloride in the water outcompetes any nitrite in the water. And up to like, I think they said like 100 ppm nitrite is can be safe for saltwater fish, which is crazy. So that is why having 0.1 ppm of nitrite None of my fish seemed to be affected by it at all because probably the chloride amounts were helping to uh, negate the nitrite toxicity. I'll put links down in the description if you wanna read those articles I found, but thankfully I feel like I've gotten over the learning curve of taking care of mudskippers and brackish aquariums. And so I'm gonna wait a few months and then I'll do another video giving you my honest review of whether I think they're worth it or not. But huge thanks to my members for convincing me to get mudskippers in the first place, as well as to Zenzo from Tazawa Tanks. He's definitely been instrumental to answering a lot of my questions about brash fish tanks, as well as mudskippers. If you want to see a care video about these mudskippers, check it out over here. Otherwise, take time to enjoy your aquariums. And I'll see you in the next video.